Hello, Jungle Explorer here, and uh, I'm going to take another look at this mini F9 camera. I purchased one of these uh, a couple of years ago from a different company, and um, I wasn't too impressed with it back then. And it's been a few years, and I have really looked around and not been able to find a suitable replacement for this actual camera. It really fills a, a very specific niche, and um, I just uh, can't find anything uh, that will fill its function, so I thought I would go ahead and buy uh, another brand. This is the uh, Gord, Gord VE or Gord V brand. Um, this is not actually printed on the box, it's just a sticker that's there, so I'm assuming that probably there's several manufacturers uh, that, uh, well, I, there's probably just one manufacturer of this, this camera and you know they sell it to a bunch of different uh, companies and they slap their stickers on it because you see a, a several different uh, companies that sell the exact same camera with the same exact specifications um, I'm hoping that in the last two years they've made some improvements to this camera because um, the last time I had one two years ago uh, it, it just wasn't all uh, that uh, I hoped it would be um, the price has pretty much remained the same for these cameras. They, they've they stayed around $50 a piece. They have not changed that price. That that's I paid about $52 for this on Amazon.com. I'll place a link to the product. This product right here in the description of the video. Uh, if you just go underneath the video box on YouTube and uh, click on the show more button, you'll, you'll find the description there. So, um, we're just gonna kind of open it up and see what this box came in. This this is a different box than the uh, first one that I reviewed. Um, let's see what it says here on the box. It says H264 AVI. I'm really not liking the AVI part. I was hoping it would record an MP3, so evidently that hasn't improved. I mean, it's not not MP3, but MP4. Uh, 1080p resolution, that doesn't mean diddly squat as far as quality. 30 FPS, that's okay. Camera, speaker, USB 2.0, and up to a 32 uh, gigabyte uh, SD card. Uh, this is a much more better box than the original one that I, I bought two years ago. It had a whole bunch of specifications like a L LCD display and, and things like that that had nothing to do with the actual camera. Uh, I think they've they've cleaned that up a little bit. So let's take a look at this and uh, just open this box up and see what comes in the box with the camera. Okay, so let's see here. Here's the little camera right here. Now the one thing, you might say, well, what's so unique about this camera? Uh, there's several camera, this is kind of what we call a barrel cam. It looks kind of like a shotgun barrel or a flashlight camera. Looks like a little handheld flashlight. Uh, this round style, there are some other styles of this out here, but let me show you what's really different and what makes this one unique. Is this 120 degree field of vision, field of view right there, okay? Um, most of the other barrel size ones or the flashlight style little uh, cameras, action cams, uh, are gonna be 170 to 180 degree. Um, and what that's going to do is it, it's, that's a fisheye effect. So essentially you're stretching reality. So unless something's really close to you, it's going to look a lot smaller than it actually is in real life. And so you don't get an actual um, real representation of uh, what uh, real life is. This, this camera is the only one I've been able to find that has this 120 degree field of view which is going to be a lot closer to what it really looks like in real life with your, with, your, with your own eyes. And for my purposes I really want that because my intention is to use this actually on a gun barrel in, uh, in uh, you know, shooting circumstances and I want a real life view of what I'm seeing and you know your your action cameras like your GoPros and those action style cameras that have the 170 or 160 degree field of view uh, they really don't work for that situation because they have that wide angle fisheye lens everything in the distance appears extremely small and uh, not clear so um, I did like that about the other one that I bought and I appreciated that 
Um, I just wasn't satisfied with the quality and I had some actual me mechanical problems with that, that camera, the first one I bought two years ago. So let's go ahead and, and uh, continue. We've got here a um, pull this open. Uh, this is an arm strap or something. Not sure. It's just a basically a strap to strap it to something, uh, like a tree or something like that. Um, we have a bicycle mount for it. That's good. Uh, a USB cable. That's another thing on this that uh, I really wish they would move away with is it has a proprietary USB cable, not a standard micro or mini USB that you would see on most of the other action cameras. Um, so that's they haven't improved that. has a little, uh, win little window or dash stick-on mount here. And this, this mount right here for... Uh, basically allowing you to put it on a tripod uh, get it out of this package here we go this this would allow you to, to actually put it on a tripod and use it that way so little static electricity there uh, the other one didn't have this actual mount this is a new mount if I can get it off I'm gonna have to work with that I, I can't really see how that gets off of there anyways uh, also has a strap and let's see that's that's it so you've got your 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 dash or your little sticky mount here um, your strap mount your bicycle mount and this tripod mount thing here so that's that's good has a, a few good accessories on it well I'm gonna put this into some use here in the next couple of days I'm gonna be going dove hunting tomorrow and hopefully put it into use there and so we'll get some live action uh, footage with that and we'll see how it does there um, and then I'll come back in uh, after I've done some video testing I'll show you what it's done
All right. Hope you enjoyed that nice, exciting dove hunting video there. I know I did. Um, first time I got to go hunting this year, and there happened to be a lot of birds out there, so that was pretty exciting. Uh, there was two days of footage there. Um, I didn't obviously didn't include it all, um, but uh, went on a Saturday and a Sunday and got plenty of birds, so I had a good time. Um, just as a side note, all the birds are, are uh, for food. I don't, I don't just hunt for fun. I, I do hunt to eat. I enjoy eating doves, so um, they're all being put into use. Um, so now back to the camera. How do you think it did? Well, I think it did pretty good, honestly. I was, I was quite surprised. It did a lot better than the first unit sim that was similar to this from a different company that I received a couple years ago. It held up well, the buttons all worked, it did pretty good. Um, obviously I was using two cameras. I was using the SJ Cam, SJ7 Star um, alongside this. Um, and the reason I did that was uh, so that you could kind of get an idea of how both of them would perform. Um, now it's not fair to compare this to the SJ uh, Star uh, SJ7 Star because um, this is a $50 camera and the SJ7 Star is a $170 camera, so more than three times the price. Um, it has uh, some higher quality components, uh, a Sony sensor and stuff like that, which this doesn't have. But that being said, I think it did fairly well. I think it did pretty good. Um, you know, it uh, the footage. I did a couple of uh, you know editing gymnastics with the footage. Um, uh, there towards the middle and the end I zoomed in on a couple of them and the reason I did that was I kind of wanted you to see what would happen to the video once you cropped it and, and expanded a little bit. Um, there's not a whole lot of room for, for cropping on this but you know I did crop up to 50, 40 percent um, or 60 percent and, and you know it wasn't good quality video but you could still tell what was going on so uh, you have a little wiggle room in what you can do with the the footage that this takes. It's not, you know, you can't. It's not like you can't zoom in a little bit. Um, it can be done if you have the editing software to do it. So um, I just thought I'd throw that kind of stuff in there, just you know, so kind of have a, a a whole, you know, whole uh, complete circle of what you can do with it. Um, I don't want to take up a lot of your time, but I do want to cover some of the basics of this camera. Um, and tell you what I liked about it and what I don't like about it. What I, what I, you know, glad's there and what I wish would improve. Um, so I, I wrote up a list of pros and cons here. So I'm going to start with the pros, uh, which I think it does have some pretty good pros to it. Um, one of the amazing things that uh, I found out about this camera was the battery life. Now I'm used to my. Uh, um, action cameras that last about 45 minutes, 40, sometimes close to an hour um, on one battery. Um, when I went hunting, I went up at 5 o'clock, I was meeting with some buddies there at 5, and we hunted until about uh, 7.30, so that's about two and a half hours. Um, I had the, gun, the camera attached to the gun, as you saw in the video. Um, and by the way, just side note, um, that clamp that you saw there, um, it's not actually too easy to find that thing. It took me a while to find that. And just in case you're interested and say, hey, man, I'd like, where, where did you get that? Um, I'm gonna put a link to that video, to that to that clamp in the description of this video. So, you know, you don't have to go looking all over and trying to figure out what it was. It's in the link just underneath the video. There's a description area on YouTube. Click on the show more button and you'll see uh, see a link there to that to that clamp that I used to clamp it to the to the gun. I'll also have a link to this uh, camera right here um, down there. So um, back on point here, the uh, the camera lasted two and a half hours. Um, I actually, it, I don't know how long it would have lasted because it actually didn't die. I only used it for two and a half hours and it still was running. And that's filming constantly. That's not in standby. That's turning it on, turning it into 1080p um, uh, mode and letting it just run for two and a half hours. It, it ran for two and a half hours and it didn't die. So that's actually quite, that's more than double the battery life of a standard action camera. So I think that's pretty good. Um, as I talked to in the beginning of the, uh, of the video um, about the 120 field of view lens, uh, listen, if you like that, that angle of lens and, and I have a reason that I want it, and let me just explain real quickly, 
you know, I wanted obviously it to be hooked to a gun barrel. Um, well, when you're filming things with a that, with a camera that's hooked to a gun barrel, okay, obviously it's going to be pointed in the right direction all the time, and what you're going to be filming is going to be directly right in front of the camera. So you don't need a wide angle lens to actually capture a whole bunch of area because what you're going to be filming is right in front of you. So for my purposes, the 120 angle degree lens is better. There are actually some other gun cameras out there that are made for guns, and they're 170, 180 degree uh, field of vision or field of view, uh, which makes no sense to me. I just, it's like whoever designed that was not a hunter. They didn't know what they were doing. Uh, they were technicians that designed what they thought hunters needed. Um, but, you know, honestly, this is 120 degree. If it was 80 degrees, it would be even better. So maybe one day they'll design one. But having said that, this flashlight design, uh, which is what this is, it, it's a lot easier to connect to, to round cylindrical objects with that clamp. The square GoPro style cameras are much more harder to connect to things. So there's uh, just the, the, the shape of it. Um, it makes it easier, you know, just round and you can just, a lot of things you can clamp around it. So it makes it pretty easy to use. You could actually just put some tape around it to a barrel. You could just take some duct tape and duct tape and it'd work just fine. So that the flashlight design has definite benefits. Um, shock resistant. Now, in the two days I was out there, I'm, I'm sorry to say I was off my game. I'm normally a very good shot, but uh, uh, for whatever reason, I didn't practice enough this year. I was really not hitting well. Even though in the video I only show you where I hit birds because that's doesn't really. I mean, me shooting open space air is not going to help you tell anything about the camera. Um, I actually shot 125 times. I'm a little embarrassed about that number, but I shot five boxes of shells. Now. You got to understand if you don't know much about guns that a 12 gauge, 12 gauge shotgun shell is, is a pretty large shell. It has a lot of powder in it, and and shotgun powder is actually faster burning than like rifle powder and stuff. And so it, it has a real strong, fast shock to it. Um, and so this was subjected to 125 explosions. That shock. Uh, it, and uh, it suffered no ill harm, no damage or anything. It works just fine. So that's actually needs to be noted that this is quite shock resistant and durable. So that was really good. Um, as I already said, uh, it's the only one like it in its price range. So if you want a flashlight style camera that's not $400, uh, that's you know a budget camera that takes decent quality video, this is the only one you're going to get. It's, it's the only one. So it holds that niche. It's, it's the only one in its price range like this with that 120 degree uh, field of vision lens there. Um, it's simple to use. Now the reason I'm saying it's simple to use, um, it's simple to operate. Okay, It's not actually simple to use in the sense of programming it because the actual programming of it is quite complex, requires connecting it to a computer um, opening a, a text editing program uh, with a little notepad file and then uh, doing some uh, you know cryptic type um, programming for which the box does not come with any instructions how to do um, and that is kind of uh, you know a down downsize but I'll get to that later um, and then the decent quality video now I say decent quality, you might say, hey, that was pretty good video. And it was, but it's just not as good as, say, the SJ7, you know, star. So I'm not going to say it's great because, you know, there's a lot better video out there. But it is good. Um, and and you, you can judge for yourself whether it's going to be up to your standards or not. Now I'm going to, uh, to be fair, I'm going to list some cons on it. Um, <clears throat> number one, cannot flip the video in camera. Now why that's important is the buttons here are when they're on on top that means it's filming that's the top of the camera um, and that's in upright mode basically the way it should be. Uh, because I had to mount it to my gun and I couldn't have the bu buttons between the the uh, the camera and the barrel where I couldn't get to them I had to turn it upside down and put the button buttons on the bottom and a lot of cameras have a way to actually uh, flip the video so that when you record it, it ends up right side up. This one does not. Uh, at least I, I tried for about three hours and couldn't find a way to do it. So um, 
and again, if it did have a way, it's in that complex system of typing in and editing a notepad, uh, a text file, um, and I couldn't find, there's no instructions for it, and I couldn't find a code how to do it. I tried several that people suggested, none of them worked. Okay, so that's one big deal. You cannot flip the video in camera. Cannot remove the date stamp. Well, that kind of goes back to, to the number one. Uh, the date stamp, number one, I don't like videos that have date stamps on them. Just bug the crud out of me. Um, but in this case, I could not find a way to get rid of it. Did a lot of research. I tried a lot of things, could not get rid of the darn date stamp. And because I couldn't get rid of it when, um, you know, the video was not upside down when you were watching it. And the reason it wasn't upside down was because in my video editor, I was able to flip it. But what the consequence of that was the date ended up in the upper left-hand corner and it was upside down <coughs> because I couldn't get rid of it. So just kind of know that that's there. And uh, you know, and if you found a way to do either one of these on this camera, please comment and tell me how to do it. Uh, hey, I'd appreciate it. I'd like to figure out how to do that. Um, MOV format. I had some problems with um, the the actual file that this produces. Now, on the box here, it says that it produces an AVI format. That's not true. It produces an MOV, which is an old Apple format. And uh, it's a good format, and I have other cameras that produce that format, and I have no trouble with them. But I had trouble with the, the file that this produced. The video was fine, but it lost the audio track. The audio track's there, but my video editor could not actually access it, so all of the video was silent. Okay? Now, internal battery. Now, it does have a long battery, as I said. It lasted up to two and a half hours. It might even last than three hours. Problem is, is, if you need longer than that, you're up the creek without a paddle because it has no way to remove a battery and put a new one in. Only way to get more juice in this is to plug it in and charge it. And that will take many hours to charge it up. So, you know, that's kind of a, a, a down. It's As long as you know that, you're good. Just don't plan on taking it on a week's vacation without that cable to charge it or a way to charge it. Okay? Um, Non-standard USB cable, and that's another thing, you know, it has an internal battery, can only be charged via the cable, and it's some kind of weird cable you're not going to find anywhere. You're not going to just walk into a store and buy this cable, okay? You're not going to find it. You're going to have to order it to get another cable for it. So go ahead and buy a backup if you buy this camera because it has this non-standard connection here, not a standard micro or mini like you would have on your phone and some other computer devices. Uh, it's got its own little USB connection uh, that's not readily available. So that's that's a big con, but you know, if you know what it's going in, you can plan for it. No programming instructions, okay? That, I've already dealt with that. It's hard to program this thing. If you want to change anything, it's hard. And a poor quality mic. Now, I mean, that makes a lot of sense since there is no mic on this thing. It does have a tiny little hole right there, if you can see it, and uh, that's that's where the sound is supposed to go in. But since it's a waterproof de device, um, well, I don't know how waterproof, but it's supposed to be waterproof. Um, you know, that means that's an underwater mic, which means it's not going to capture great audio, even if it was exposed. So you've got a, a bad mic and a tiny hole. Uh, let me just put it this way: Don't buy this camera for capturing audio. If you want to buy this camera and you need audio, capture it on your smartphone or some other external audio device. This does not capture quality audio worth worth even listening to. So uh, there's seven cons and seven pros there. I think I've been pretty fair on it. Let me just run through the basic functions of how to turn this thing on and off. Um, to turn it on, just simply uh, hold down that front button until it vibrates three times. The blue light comes on, and when it it actually um, is in standby mode. Now, uh, you have several buttons down here, I mean two buttons. The bottom one is to switch it from video or to capture uh, images, and the top one is to switch it between 1080p at 30 frames per second or to 720p at 60 frames per second. Um, <clears throat> I don't know which one uh, you want, but I tried out the 70, 720p and it just didn't seem like it was ver uh, as good a quality as, as the 1080p, so I just leave it in 1080p. 
Uh, one important factor that I, I don't think I mentioned yet is that when I bought this camera and it got to me, uh, when I was going through the little text file editing the settings on it, um, I found out that it was set to 50 hertz. And just in case you don't know what that means, um, all electrical power grids in the world operate either on 50 hertz or 60 hertz. Uh, most of North America, South America, and Central America operate on 50 hertz. Most of Europe and Asia, I'm sorry, operate on 60 hertz. But most of Europe and Asia and those continents, they operate on 50 hertz. Um, and um, if, you're try if you're filming in 50 hertz and playing it back on a device that's running with 60 hertz electricity, you could get some flickering in there. And that's what I experienced on my first test videos. So I went in and fortunately in the programming uh, of this, if you're smart enough um, and can figure it out, there's a way to actually switch the camera from filming uh, video in 50 hertz and, and switching it over to 60 hertz. Um, and I want to say right here uh, that if you buy one of these cameras and uh, you're having trouble with that programming, do not be afraid to come to my video, go down in the comment section and drop a, uh, a, a request for help there. I'm very diligent about answering all of the comments on uh, my videos. So if you need help, ask me, and if I can give it to you, by golly, I'm going to do my darn dead level best to help you. Um, and so just know that I'm there for you. Don't, you know, I'm not like, a, I know there's a lot of video creators out there on YouTube, and I don't know if they abandon their channels or what, because I know I comment all over the place asking people different questions, and I almost never get a response. And I just think that's bad form. Um, I don't want to be that way, so I'll answer you if you have a question. And you know, um, if you have a, a, a critique of my video, you know, uh, you know, like something you feel I could do better or something like that, you know, I, hey, I can handle that as long as you know it's a critique, it's intended to help me do better um, or a compliment. Hey, I love compliments; everybody likes that, you know. But uh, I don't mind uh, corrective criticism if it's if it's uh, constructive, you know. Now, there's a lot of people get on my channel, you know, guys. If you ain't got nothing good to say. Go somewhere else, all right? I'm not out there trying to hurt nobody. I'm not out there trying to offend nobody, um, you know? But I get some pretty nasty comments on my, my, my YouTube videos, and I'm a pretty nice guy, you know? So, uh, you know, just uh, if, if something I did bugs you, you know, and, and you, you know, just, I'm just a regular person, okay, guys? So just, uh, you know, be nice, and uh, I'll try to be nice back. But, uh, you know, if you need help, I'm the guy to, to, to ask, because I'll be there for you, okay? So um, let me finish up here real quick. Um, <clears throat> the uh, uh, where was that? Okay. Well, um, so you know I've run through the list of everything on here, and uh, I'm going to close this up right now. Uh, you know. I'm just going to say this, that it's a, I, I'm going to keep the camera, I'm going to use it. Um, I think it's a, a good deal for the price. Uh, this one's much better than the one I bought two years ago. It still has some things that need to get better, but uh, you know, it's, it's a good, good little camera and it fills that, that niche that I needed to fill. Um, so you know, I hope this video has been helpful to you. If it has, please like, subscribe, and comment. and. Uh, you know, if you do subscribe, remember to tick the little bell uh, down uh, next to the subscribe button. There's a little gold bell down there. Tick that. I don't know why YouTube switched to that. It doesn't make sense to me um, where you subscribe, which seems like you're saying, hey, I want to know more about this channel. But then if you don't tick that little bell, you won't get notified when I release new videos. And uh, I'm going to be doing a lot more product reviews this year. Um, and so, you know, if you tick that bell, you're going to see when uh, I release a new product review or whatever, or a new hunting video or, or a do-it-yourself video. I do a lot of different things on my YouTube channel. So tick that bell. Um, and don't forget to comment, especially if you need help or if you've got something that, some advice or, or a compliment. I appreciate all those. And I'll just leave you with that. Until next time, The Jungle Explorer signing out.